As Korea celebrated 76 years of freedom from Japanese colonial rule this past Sunday, Japan held a ceremony to mark 76 years since the end of World War II. Of course, these anniversaries are very much entwined, and the Korean media has been watching Japan closely. We've seen the continuation of a trend that has disturbed many people here, the refusal of the Japanese leader to look history square in the face. Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga did commit to never repeat the tragedy of the war in what was his first speech on this occasion since he took office less than a year ago. But what he didn't do was apologize to victims of Japanese aggression in this region, including abuses like sex slavery and forced labor. You might think, well, it's 76 years, why go over the past again now? But Suga did recount the brutal events suffered by the Japanese people, such as American atomic bombs and the firebombing of Tokyo, portraying the country more as a victim than an active aggressor in the war. Just as his predecessor Shinzo Abe, he avoided referring to Japan's wartime responsibility. We saw, during Abe's time in power, how relations with Seoul plummeted and there are other comparisons with Suga too. For instance, South Korea voiced its deep disappointment and regret that Suga sent offerings to the Yasukuni Shrine, which Seoul insists beautifies Japan's war of aggression and enshrines war criminals. Abe visited the shrine in person on Sunday, while four members of Suga's cabinet also went there, including Abe's younger brother, Nobuo Kishi, who became the first Japanese defense minister to visit the shrine since 2016. It's not just South Korea that complained either. China and Russia also responded sternly at official level, while apparently the theme of Japan's World War II surrender trended top on Chinese social media on Sunday, drawing billions of views based on its related hashtag. Meanwhile, tensions remain between South Korea and Japan over the Dokdo Islets, territory that's controlled by the South but claimed by Japan. And Seoul's foreign ministry said Monday it had strongly protested the inclusion of a map of Dokdo as Japanese territory in Tokyo's newly created defense white paper for children. South Korea actually operated sightseeing flights to Dokdo for the first time on Sunday to coincide with National Liberation Day. So, if unhealed wounds persist to this day, where does that leave the future? South Korean President Moon Jae-in did on Sunday insist that this country is open to dialogue with Japan, but also spoke of the need to rectify historical issues through international standards. One of the last opportunities for Moon before he leaves office to hold a summit with Suga passed with the Tokyo Olympics. Perhaps there needs to be more international pressure on Japan and more awareness of what happened in this region in the last century. It doesn't help that in a recent book preface, J. Mark Ramsayer of Harvard Law School has renewed his claim that Japan did not force Korean and other women into sexual slavery. For the victims, some of whom are still alive, this isn't a historical debate, but a matter of dignity.